Hey everybody, this is Ed from Rod Iron Leather and Effects again. Uh, I had been shut out of my YouTube account for a, a few months here and didn't realize there were a lot of questions about some toner transfer methods that I use. So I've just gotten around to answering all those questions and I thought I'd make a new video to show you kind of how I've updated my process a little bit. Uh, added a couple tools to it that um, aren't too expensive, uh, but really make it really easy now I feel like um, I get pretty consistent results and it, it's pretty quick um, so I'll show you a couple things here quick let me just turn this camera around um, I'm printing still on the same um, shipping label backing paper I will put a link to this stuff in the uh, description of the video um, I just get half sheet um, shipping labels off Amazon uh, the best brand yeah, that's the name of it, B-E-S-T, um, work best for me, uh, no pun intended. They're thin, they're very thin, the, uh, the, the backing paper is super thin, so that, that makes it easier to transfer. Um, you can see these came out pretty good, uh, printing wise, a couple tips, set your printer to the, uh, thickest paper setting, uh, that you have on there. I use the cardstock setting on my printer. I'm using a uh, an HP printer right now. I've used a Samsung, and that worked well, too. Um, some of the newer printers, though, I guess, are the newer laser printers aren't actual lasers. They use some kind of LED technology, and so the toner is different stuff. So if you've got a newer printer, um, you know, I got it to print fine, but then when I went to transfer it, it would not transfer. Um, so I've gone back to uh, doing this lacquer method in combination with a laminator this is a twenty dollar laminator fifteen to twenty dollars at walmart um, they've got them all over the country if you're in the u.s if not you can order this off amazon.com uh, it's just a scotch i think it's called a tl tl092 i think um, but look for scotch laminator and find just find the cheapest one it'll work fine um, on the settings it's got Sorry, the glare there is pretty bad, but it's got a 3 millimeter and a 5 millimeter setting. Put it on the 5 millimeter setting. That'll get a little hotter. And when that blue light comes on, it'll change from red to blue. It's blue right now, if you can't tell. Um, that means it's ready to go. So turn that on. Um, get your piece of copper clad here. Um, I usually just take and rub it on a piece of a scotch Bright pad. This is a very fine grade, but you can use... Uh, you can use the green ones. You can use a regular kitchen sponge one or even some uh, finer sandpaper. Just uh, get all the get all the corrosion off there. If there's any corrosion, just rough it up a little bit. That'll give you a little bit better surface to stick to for both your lacquer that we're going to use and your toner. Um, I've cut out a transfer here. I like to leave a little bit of extra paper just for handling it by. I'm going to see if I can set this up so that y'all can see. Um, and I can work with both hands. Okay, this is what I'm using. This is lacquer. It has to say lacquer on it. Acrylic, anything that says acrylic is not going to work, I don't think. Uh, you need regular lacquer. This will dissolve in alcohol. Um, that's why we use it. Because the next step, we're going to dissolve it off of here. So, um, what you're going to do... Oh, by the way, this is white. You can use clear if you want, or you can use black. It's just going to make it really hard to figure out what you're doing. Uh, white works great. So what we do, we'll shake this can up, and we are going to spray a thin layer, just enough to cover this surface completely onto the copper clad directly. Then we're going to let it dry for about 10 seconds, blow some air on it maybe, and then we're going to lay this... Um, we're going to lay this uh, transfer right on top of that lacquer. So here we go. I'm just going to spray it just with thin coat. Okay, that's good enough. Now, don't touch the surface of it. Handle it by the edges. Okay, about like that. That's good enough. It should just have a little film on the surface of it. But be tacky still. Don't touch it. Lay your transfer on there. I usually like to leave my copper clad a little bit bigger than my transfer and then just go back and either cut it. I've got a little metal shear that I use to cut it. Or you can even sand off the edges. Um, but lay that on there. 
rub it down a little bit. Um, if you want to, uh, I've got this heat gun. This is what I use for some of my guitar strap finishing. You can buy a cheap heat gun uh, for 10 or 15 bucks. That'll work too. You can heat that up a little bit and that'll also help that transfer. Now, realistically, we could probably rub this just a little bit more and we could probably lift this off here right now and have a pretty decent transfer. But what we're gonna do, is we're gonna run it through this laminator. Back up here so you can see this process. Um, this is just a stock laminator. I haven't changed anything to it except I took one of the pieces off the back of the, the feeding tray just because it was a little easier to run stuff through um, without that on there. So this is ready. I'm just going to send it through here three or four times. Um, you can send it through as many times as you want. Just make sure that paper is stuck to there good. Um, if your paper didn't stick the first time you did it, it probably means you waited just a little too long um, after you sprayed the lacquer. Uh, you know, if it's wanting to lift off. If that's the case, just take some acetone, wipe all the lacquer off, and all the uh, and any toner that transferred on there, and start over. You'll be a lot happier than trying to salvage something. If anything goes wrong, just start over. Um, it's not it's not a long process, so uh, you're better off than trying to save something. Just go ahead and start over. Now what we can do is we can lift this off here, and I'll try to let you see, and we can take a peek. And you just look more at the white paper than at the actual transfer. Okay, so once you get it halfway up and you can see there's no toner left on the paper, turn it to the other side, hold this down. This way if something didn't transfer, if we can just get the edge started, um, you can just lay it right back down, run it through the laminator again, and you're good to go. I should okay I can't get it so I should have left a little overhang on the other side so we're just gonna slowly peel this back we shouldn't have any toner at all left on the paper okay we're good to go no toner on there completely transferred onto the circuit board here but our problem is now we've got all this this white um, lacquer on here which will totally resist the acid so we need to get rid of that white lacquer. So how are we going to do that? Try to balance you here so you can see. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to use alcohol. This is uh, denatured alcohol. This is what I use. It's a little stronger. Um, there's not as much water in it as regular rubbing alcohol, but rubbing alcohol will work too. Now what you want to do here, this will dissolve the lacquer, but not the toner. So just saturate a rag with alcohol. It's better to use gloves. This will really burn in any little cut or anything you have. And just gently rub that over the surface of this PCB, this copper clad, and it will take... You can see I didn't use any pressure there. I know the lighting's terrible here. I apologize in the shop. But you can see... Can you see? The light's really bad. There we go. See how all the white is gone? Now what you're want to, going to want to do here is get like a magnifying glass and go back and look very carefully and make sure there aren't any little little places where there is any uh, either white lacquer or any toner that has strayed and got drug across so that it will make a, a short in your PCB. So look at it under a magnifying glass with a light on it and make sure... Um, if there's a little bit of to or uh, lacquer left on there, just grab your rag. You're going to do this all with, the secret to this is don't do any of it with pressure. You wash it all, just let the alcohol do the work. Just, just put the alcohol on there and let it dissolve the, the lacquer and you wipe it off. This will not work with acrylic based paints, I don't believe, because they are not, um, lacquer is, uh, from what I understand, lacquer is made from, or was originally derived from, um, a secretion of a black bug. And uh, that stuff is just dissolved in alcohol. So that's why the alcohol dissolves it. Um, it's a little streaky here, you can see, but that's not going to be a problem for us because it's on the toner itself. So that one's ready to etch now. You drop that in a solution of uh, two parts uh, hydrogen peroxide, one part muriatic acid. 
and uh, should in about five minutes it would be ready to go. Um, if you do mess up, just get some regular hardware store acetone and that will take the toner completely off there in one swipe. Don't get mixed up between your alcohol and your acetone or you'll be hating life because it will destroy all your work. Um, but that's all you need. Uh, like I said, this is a $20, um, $20 laminator from Walmart. It works great. Um, I was going to show you guys. I use this process to make my uh, prototype PCBs before uh, I make a run of PCBs for my pedals before I get them uh, manufactured. This is one I made for my new Shadowfax booster. Um, so this is the, the test one to test my PCB design. It isn't wired up in here yet. I just was testing it on the breadboard. And uh, I made that one last night and works great. Um, and that one, you can see, it has the component values. Well, you can't see very well. You can see some of it. Um, some writing on there. I did that with the same toner transfer method. I just painted it white. You can see that it's white. Um, and you could wipe that white off there if you wanted to, but I kind of like the way it looks, so I just leave it. Um, you can also use clear lacquer if you don't want to color your PCB um, top. But, uh, yeah, just print out the silk screen side. I'll show you here. In my PCB designing software, I can... I can do it both at the same time, so I just print out the reverse of the, um, you know, the silk screen layer, and I use that for the top of my PCB. Do it with toner transfer, and then of course I've got the the bottom copper side. So that's it. If you have any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment or uh, look me up on Facebook under Rod Iron Leather and Effects, and uh, shoot me a message there. I'll be happy to help you if you got any questions. Thanks.